folks, Scoot and Fool here. You can hear the planes going by overhead. I just happen to be in the flyway of the Lancaster Airport. Anyway, it's time to replace my front brake rotors. Getting a lot of brake fade and the pads are getting a little thin. They're horrible, but they're getting a little thin. So I'm gonna take off the rotors, gonna remove the caliper, give it a quick once over with brake clean. It's not sticking or anything, so it seems okay. Just get the gunk off of it, uh, the outside there. And then I'm going to replace the pads relatively simple job just need a 19 millimeter socket to get that off 14 I think it's a 14 or 17 on the other side to hold it in place get the axle out I can probably replace the pads without dismounting the caliper because I want to actually get in and kind of clean the caliper a little bit with a bit of a wire brush and so on and get the gunk off I'm gonna remove it there's two bolts there one here one here and then there are the four bolts on the brake disc itself. Not a very difficult job, but something to do. I have just an old electric impact. Don't always need this, but I don't have a whole lot of upper body strength, especially after COVID. So I'm going to quick zip this off. All right, so it's loose. Got to get my other tools and get it. Okay. And since I've already gotten the uh, thing loosened, it's just a matter at this point of zipping it off. Ratching it off. I'll hit these threads with a little bit of thread cleaner. Actually, they're not too bad. Just gonna loosen these guys. Love my T-handle. And then once I get this off, I'm gonna to wanna to secure it up so that it's out of the way. But probably don't need to take off the caliber just to get the wheel off. You wanna give this just a quick bump to get it out. And then the wheel will come right off. bit of corrosion and the like that does build up. This is ridden in all weather, so it looks like in order to make space, I am going to have to take that off, so that's easy enough. Oh, those are really grooved. They aren't what I would call bad per se, but certainly not what I would call great. They're not terribly thin, they're just heavily grooved. Secure this up here someplace. And now the wheel comes right off. Look at that. Oh, wow. It takes a bit to loosen these guys because they are torqued to spec. Mm. Now, Honda does list these bolts as a one time use bolt. Not 100% sure why, but. I've always reused them. If you do this yourself, probably want to get the Honda bolts, but again, they're a bolt, so. This is just a me doing things. This is not a how-to or telling you what to do. This is just watching me do it. I think part of the reason they're probably saying one-time use is they've got some red Loctite on there, which is the good stuff. Never really used Loctite. Main reason I've never used it is I've always found that proper torque usually holds stuff just fine. Just lifts off. This is the old one. You can probably see from the way it reflects, it's heavily grooved. Brand new one, still in the paper. Plastic, whatever. Look at that, it's shiny. Line her up. Make sure your threads match up good. Clean a bit of the gunk out with a wire brush here. better. 
Again, this is just in my driveway. I don't have a garage. So I just do things how I can. Figure how many people in third world countries, this is all they got, so this is what they do. Right on the street, do a repair, and off it goes for a good long time. The way it's done in most of the world. And it works just fine. I've got the caliper already off. I've got to get the pads out. Best way to get the pads out is to, well, the way that Honda says to get the pads out is to remove this pin and then it slides right out. You can see there's a lot of brake dust buildup, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. So I got my 10 millimeter socket on here. I'm just getting the pin out. And it only has to screw out a little ways and then it will uh, slide out the rest of the way generally. So now that I've got the pin out, pads fall right out. Again, they're not terribly thin. However, you can see they're very heavily grooved and they're actually starting to crack. Again, this is the pin. Looks like it could probably use a new gasket on the other side there, but that's all right. Um, I'm going to clean that up with some brake clean before it goes back in and put the new pads in place. Okay, comparing new to old, the old ones are the closest here, and these are the new. The pad serve, as you can see, is very worn, uh, slightly different upgraded version of the pads, I guess. But the used ones, of course, they're not the fail point, but you can see if you look closely, there's some cracking along the edges, and yeah, it's just time to replace them. Okay, I've pushed in the, the pistons so that there will be enough space to put the new brake pads in, because again, there's about six millimeters of space that wasn't there before. So they're pushed in pretty far, pretty much the whole way there. So once I get everything back together again, all that brake fluid has gone up into the master cylinder. So. Once I get the pads back in, there'll be enough space to put the wheel back on. So you, you slide your brake pads in. Make sure that they are able to accept the pin here. Which when you're kind of blind to where it is, it's hard to line up. There we are. All right, so there's one in place. Now with these, there's a little hook at the top, and it goes around this post here. And now we're ready to screw it back in. So using my feet, using my wife's help with keeping the handlebar steady, <laughs> I got this all back together again. And now what we're going to do is tighten it back up. I'll be torquing this separately. I'm not doing a video on torque specs, so I'll do that off camera. Okay, so everything's back together again. This is actually a little harder than it looks. It took me a couple of tries. I cut out a lot of the knee fumbling stuff, which is what most people do on these kinds of things. Just so that that wasn't detracting from the rest of the video. So you think you're done. Well, you're not done yet. The wheel should spin relatively freely. That's good. That means that nothing's binding because at this point there's no pressure actually on the brakes at all. The sirens don't have anything to do with this, but what you need to do, you'll notice lot, really no pressure from the brakes. And there we go. You don't want to try to ride it until you have actually pull the brake lever a couple times to get the brake pads out to where they need to be. Nice, good pressure there. Wow, that's so much better than it used to be. <laughs> ah. And now the wheel does grab a little bit as those new pads are grabbing. So now for the test ride. Well, it is a brisk out of the day and I have just replaced the brake pads and disc on this PCX of mine. One thing that I do notice right away is there is a bit more pushback on my front brake lever, which 
makes sense. Making sure there's nobody behind me. I'm going uh, get to the speed limit, 25 miles an hour. Nobody behind me, and brake. <laughs> Scooter brakes generally suck. I don't even know how far that was. <laughs> it was about 50 feet. <laughs> but they're responding. Now, if I do all three systems, again, wanting to make sure nobody is behind me. Okay. And that's 25 miles an hour and brake with all three. Oh, that's that's much better. Fantastic. Perfect. Ah, they're working much better. Combined brake system on this is not bad. We'll go this way. I did have to make sure that I had good pressures in the tires. With the cold of autumn coming, it had knocked a good amount out of the tires. So there is the right pressure now, which is good. A couple of caveats. This is not a how-to video. This is just me doing work on my bike. Anything you see, should you do it yourself? That's up to you. Again, it's just may interest some people, may not interest anybody. I had to do it, so I figured put it on film. The previous disc had so many grooves in it that it just wasn't really useful anymore. So it has been replaced with a new one. Oh yeah, after a few uses, it's gotten better. And it does take a little bit of time for the brake pads to bed into the rotor. That's pretty normal. The new rotor surface is perfectly smooth and the new brake pads are perfectly smooth. I have an appointment for next week to get the calipers rebuilt on the NT. An update on that situation. After several people who were more familiar with the NT700 saw my little crash video, they had a concern that my front brakes might be sticky. So I went out and I rolled the front wheel and sure enough they rolled for a little bit and it stuck. I took the calipers off and inspected them and they need to be rebuilt. Yay! I could do the rebuild myself but I just don't have the clean workspace available to do it. Rather than introduce contaminants to the system, I'm just going to have somebody with a clean workspace do the work for me. And it's not going to cost you much, which is good. So folks, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed my little foray into doing something with my brakes. <laughs> be safe, be well, and be blessed. Good and fool out.